When you're playing Chopin's Etude Opus 10 Number 7 with small hands, or maybe with hands of any size, it's a good idea to practice the chord plus the repeated note just as one shape with two and one on the same note. So instead of practicing, you'll play with this little pecking shape here with your thumb and your second finger. It might be tempting sometimes to try and have the thumb play twice to not have a lar as large a shape, don't do it. You need to do that 2-1. It doesn't work to repeat. At least I haven't been able to make it work. So you're going to be moving from comfortable position to comfortable position, and you really have to find each one of those. And some of them may be pretty strange. You want to really keep an open mind and remember that the perfect hand position is the one that lets you move easily and freely to the next hand position. It's probably not going to be just your five fingers on the keys. It might be something much, much stranger. You want to make sure that you stay flexible and release any tension in between all of those shapes that you find. There also are some places where you might be tempted to take a note from the right hand in the left hand, and normally I'm all for that, but I found that in this piece it doesn't really work. It breaks the flow and it's not worth the effort. So my recommendation is don't try and take notes with the left hand in this one. It's just more trouble than it's worth. Some places the left hand is going to have to do some pretty big expanses and you're going to want to make sure that you rotate instead of stretching or just jumping for some of those. And I'll walk you through those. Let me show you what some of these moments look like kind of on the ground here. It's a good idea to play every duple as one chord while you're practicing this. So you'll have two and one on the same note. And you want to find a comfortable hand position for that, and you'll notice it's not going to be this. It's going to be more like this. So some of those shapes really do get strange, and if you look at measures 17 and 18, that's pretty strange. And this is where a concept I call the one-eared llama gets really helpful. The one-eared llama is a hand position that might seem sort of strange, but can actually be really, really useful and helpful. So if you imagine that your hand and your arm are a llama, here's two-eared llama, hello, with this being the body, and this being the neck, and this being the head, ears, nose, mouth, the distance between the ear and the nose is actually really far, and if you let your hand close, it can help you find the shape that you need. So just to really show you the difference between what's possible with a flat hand stretching and what's possible with a one-eared llama, this is about as far as I can stretch my fourth finger and fifth finger apart. And it doesn't feel great, and it's not that far. So if I take this distance, and then I turn my other hand into a one-eared llama, look at how much farther I can reach between five and four. And of course it's true in both hands. So the one-eared llama reminds us that we are three-dimensional creatures and that we're going to sometimes need strange hand positions that are not just your typical one, two, three, four, five position, but that you can find the comfortable position that will let you get to where you need to go. So the possibility of llama helps us play this in a way that a flat hand won't let us do it. So while the right hand is doing this llama business, the left hand needs to open and rotate. And I like to just jump five to five. In measures 24 to 25, it could be possible to take the top note in the second chord with the right thumb. But I actually think it works better to roll it. Just make sure you let go of the pinky. In measures 56 to 58, the game kind of changes. And instead of it being all about the repeated note, we still have the repeated note, but actually the main thing here is you need to practice the rotation up to the next chord. So instead of playing chord to the note, you also need to practice note to the chord. So 
So make sure you're moving from comfortable position to comfortable position in the right hand, even if they're weird, and that you're rotating through the left hand. And enjoy Opus 10 number 7. Let me know if you have any questions, and good luck! Thank you.